Can you stretch too much? If you stretch too often, can it lead to injuries? What about being hypermobile? Does that make you more likely to be at risk of an injury? I'm Dr. Anthony Davis, and this picture was me many years ago when I was very forcibly forcing myself into hypermobility in yoga, especially practicing Ashtanga yoga. Here are more images of the kinds of things that I was doing when I was practicing yoga. I was always trying to get my foot over my head, um, do the deepest back bend that I could possibly imagine, really work on that hip mobility for lotus pose. And again, this type of uh, crazy, crazy hip mobility for this horse pose as well. So I was constantly forcing it into these hypermobile poses, but you have to dig way back into my Instagram account to see any of these pictures because I stopped doing these for a good reason. But let's go ahead and let's explore the research on flexibility and injury and find out if you can stretch too much. Is it possible to overdo it? Well, the first thing that I think is important to do is look at hypermobility. People who are hypermobile, things like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or just generalized hypermobility, and see if those individuals have more injuries. Are they at a greater risk of injury compared to people who are not hypermobile? Because this, I think, to me, kind of clears up the whole issue is if, you're not hypermobile, and it were possible to stretch so much that you became excessively mobile, then would that predispose you to an injury? So there's two questions there. One, are hypermobile people at risk of an injury? And two is, can we actually become excessively mobile? Can we actually make structural changes to make our joints extra mobile? So these are just two studies, but I could have really referenced a whole host of studies that basically said the same thing. Um, this study was interesting, though, because it uh, compared people uh, with hypermobile, uh, hypermobility um, to people who were not hypermobile um, during sports and looked at their injury rates. And they did see that there was a, a significantly increased risk of knee injuries in hypermobile people, but there was not an increased risk of ankle injuries. So that was kind of an interesting study. I'd be really curious to find out why that was. Um, you know, it's all kind of theoretical, but I kind of wonder if, you know, the knee during sports really is not supposed to be super mobile in terms of rotation and uh, side to side movement, but the ankle should have lots of mobility. So maybe having good mo mobility in the ankles is nice, but if the knee is excessively mobile and it's, it's supposed to be a stable joint, maybe that could contribute to the prevalence of knee injuries. That would be kind of borrowing from um, the uh, joint by joint theory. And that's from uh, Gray Cook and Michael Boyle. So just a theory there. But, you know, then we started looking at shoulder injuries and same kind of thing. We were looking at athletes and we were comparing um, hypermobility to people who were not hypermobile. And this was a systematic review. So we were looking at a bunch of studies and we found a three times increased risk of shoulder injury. So people who were hypermobile were three times as likely to have a shoulder injury. So um, being hypermobile does make, it does appear, and I, again, I could have cited a lot more studies here, but um, it does appear that being hypermobile uh, makes it more likely that you're going to get an injury, especially in sport. So if we could stretch so much that we became hypermobile um, by conventional standards, then I would say that it kind of makes sense that that might put us at a risk of injury. So it might be more valuable to spend time focusing on stability rather than really, really excessive levels of flexibility. The other thing about stretching is that if you overdo it with stretching, especially static passive stretching, um, all of these studies and more have shown that if you do static stretching prior to sports, and this would be more relevant for really explosive things like sprinting or, you know, soccer, football, those kinds of things. Um, if you really have to get up and move and be explosive or um, perform at a maximum lift if you're lifting weights, then doing a lot of static stretching prior to doing those things can impair your performance. It might make you perform slightly worse because it seems to inhibit the muscles for up to 24 hours. So you can definitely overdo it with static passive stretching before um, an athletic event or something where you really have to perform with your muscles. And if you overdo it, then your performance 
performance might suffer. So yes, you can definitely overdo it uh, in terms of muscle performance. Now, the next question that I have is, can we actually make structural changes to the body, to the muscle tendons, the fascia, uh, the ligaments, etc.? Can we actually change the structure of that connective tissue through stretching? Because if hypermobility is a risk factor for injury, but we're talking about a person who's not hypermobile, and then we want to say, well, does stretching actually change your connective tissues in a way that you could maybe theoretically become excessively mobile or hypermobile? Um, well, let's find out. Can we remodel tissue? So here are three studies. The first one um, basically showed us that if you are stretching, just doing kind of your normal stretching uh, for uh, less than eight weeks, then we don't really see a lot of changes in the musculotendinous junction or in the viscoelasticity of your tissues. We don't really see structural changes. It's mostly sensory. So if you only begin a stretching or flexibility program and you do it for about two months, then most of the changes that are happening are neurological changes. They're sensory changes. They're not necessarily uh, structural changes. So this study hints at the idea that if we did want to make structural changes, we really want to be consistent over months, many, many, many months. We want to be really consistent if we wanted to make structural changes. Next, what about the actual duration of a single stretch? How long should you hold a stretch? And can you make structural changes by holding a stretch for longer? And uh, these two studies showed that um, if you did stretch for longer than 120 seconds, uh, so two minutes, then you did start, start to see some changes in the musculotendinous junction. So the actual properties of the tendon started to change, the elasticity changed, that type of thing. Um, there were also uh, some studies I was trying to dig up um, from my FRC lectures. Uh, I couldn't quite find them, but these were... Um, histological studies of fascia where when we put a stretch on it, the fibroblastic activity where we started to actually remodel and basically squirt out more collagen, uh, collagen and synthesize more proteins, that it took about two minutes to actually of, of a constant stretch or load on the fascia before we started to see tissue remodeling. So um, if I can find those, I'll dig those up. But it looks like two minutes um, or more might be actually structural in nature. But if you stretch for less than two minutes, then it's more likely to be just sensory. And then lastly, we had another study here that looked at, well, what about two minutes? Okay, if two minutes is good, what about five minutes? And they found that actually five minutes was even better. If you held a constant stretch for five minutes, you saw even better um, remodeling of the tissue or uh, actual changes in the structure and properties of the tissue if you held the stretch for more than five minutes. By the way, if you wanna download these notes, if you're a member on my website, then any level of paid membership can access the notes. You can be a member for as little as $5 a month. It really helps me out. And then one last aspect of stretching that I want to address is can it become an addiction? And so if, if you're talking about overdoing something, I mean, let's be reasonable. You could overdo anything if you do it too much, right? I mean, you can drink too much water and drown yourself. You can do too much running to the point where you get rhabdo and your kidneys <laughs> go into fa failure. Your brain can become addicted to anything. And Trust me, I know because I suffered from drug addiction and alcoholism for many years. I've been sober at this time for about six years now. Um, so I know all about addiction and you can become addicted to anything. So if you, if the only time, let's say you have pain and you stretch and you get a temporary relief because while well, stretching does temporarily change what you feel in your body, well, the chemicals that change in your body as a result of that, your body can be addicted to those chemicals. And part of those are literal opiates, by the way. Part of the reason that stretching or movement feels good is because of pain gating, which is releasing enkephalin in the spinal cord. And that's actually an opiate that's inside of your own body. We call it an endogenous opiate. So your body can be uh, addicted to any kind of chemical stew of any feeling, thought, emotion, activity. 
but especially if it's an opiate, <laughs> you might imagine that we get addicted to it. So, you know, if we have a person who's already hypermobile and possibly at risk of injuries, right, and they are compulsively stretching and they're making themselves even more mobile. And by the way, these people um, often are, are quite, uh, I, would, I would call it like body dysmorphia because they, I see this all the time in the clinic where I'm doing some kind of assessment on their mobility and they're like, wow, I'm really tight. I've got tight ham hamstrings. And their hamstrings go to like 120 degrees of flexion, which normal is about 90 degrees. And most people have about 80 degrees of hamstrings, um, you know, of, of hip range of motion with a straight leg. So these people are, are uh, dysmorphic. They think that their body is tight when their body is hypermobile excessively mobile. So, you know, it, it, it's almost like, um, well, I mean, it's, it's a kind of a disorder. I'm not saying that in a mean way, but it's like their representation of their body compared to what their body is actually like. Uh, those are two different stories. And then on top of it, because they think they're tight now, and they're maybe addicted to the stretching sensation. Now they're just compulsively stretching all the time. And again, I see this a lot in clinic and this is kind of like this, you know, nervous energy of, oh, I just got to stretch, 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 putting their foot behind their head. And I'm like, that's very nervous energy. They're very anxious uh, people as well sometimes. And stretching is the only thing that they can do to calm themselves down. Um, of course, my suggestion would be maybe try to do something about the underlying anxiety and maybe find another way to relieve it. Maybe with strength training, maybe with running, with cardio, maybe those things would scratch that itch, so to speak. But okay, we're, if we're hypermobile already and then we kind of compulsively stretch all the time and make ourselves even more more mobile because we think we're tight when we are not tight at all and we do not need more range of motion. I mean, that's really an addiction. I mean, you talk about um, doing more of the thing that is causing a risk in your life. I mean, the, overstretching is nowhere near as bad as like alcoholism uh, or drug addiction, but it's kind of the same tendency, like mentally speaking. And again, I'm speaking just about my own experience. So I'm not saying if you're listening, I'm not saying that you and your experience is like this, but from my experience with, um, you know, addiction and recovery, it was like, if I had, um, a drink, then I would feel better for a short time, but then I would have to keep drinking over and over and over again, a lot, a, a lot. And that was making the problem worse. And that was making me feel worse. And so what did I do when I felt bad, well, then I had to drink, but that made the problem worse, which may, gave me another reason to drink. It's this awful, awful cycle. Um, and again, stretching is not nearly that bad, but it's kind of a similar tendency where if hypermobile, hypermobility is putting your joints at risk and then you're compulsively stretching because it's the only thing that makes you feel good and it might make things worse, that's a pretty addictive tendency in, in my opinion. Okay. So can you stretch too much? Well, first of all, you know, in order to really overdo it and become hypermobile, if you can even do that, then, I mean, you would have to really stretch a lot, very consistently and for a long time, every time that you did it. So you can really significantly increase your mobility over time if you work hard at it for a long time, but you really have to try at it. It's not that easy. So if you just kind of, you know, stretch for a couple of minutes, you're not going to be overdoing it. However, you know, uh, we do see again that it does imp impair sport performance. So even if you're not really overdoing the stretching normally, if you had a big event, a, a game, some kind of thing where you had to really exert your muscles, then you might not want to do static passive stretching for a long time right before the event that might impair your performance. And then again, if you're already hypermobile, why are we stretching at all? There's no need for hypermobile people to stretch, period, period. There's no need, there's no benefit whatsoever to stretching for hypermobile people, zero. And other than it feels good, but again, we talked about that, it feels good, but is it helping you or is it maybe increasing your risk of injury? It might be, so I don't know, I would, I would, calm it on the excessive contortionism. And then again, the big picture here is, is stretching even helping you in the first 
place. And I mean, the research on stretching shows that stretching really doesn't improve any aspect of life or health or prevent injuries or reduce muscle soreness. It's totally unnecessary to begin with. Um, so if you're going to do it, you know, why are you doing it uh, <laughs> in the first place? I do think that there's a time and a place for some targeted stretching, but as a general rule, you don't have to just stretch all of your muscles all the time. If you just move your body through its full range of motion on a daily basis, you could do that with weights. You could do that with any kind of body weight activity, yoga, whatever. Um, and that's plenty. Again, if you want to download the notes, become a member on my website. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. Movement is medicine. So move your body every single day.